it is a, a snippet of a four layer board mm -hmm. and um, we've got a microstrip on the top we've got a microstrip on the bottom you can't see it but here's the mm -hmm. beginning of it over here um, and we've got two planes mm -hmm. and and there's a single via that goes from the top layer to the bottom layer uh, the the top microstrip to the bottom mm -hmm. microstrip and so this illustrates the idea of okay the signal goes through the signal via how does the return current that's on the top layer here uh, initially um, how does that return current go from the top layer of the board to the uh, bottom layer of the board? So here's here you see that signal initially propagating. So we're using, um, uh, in this case, we, we put together the 3D tool, the three, 3D model of the structure, and we're using one of the important tools in the tool suite that is a transient simulator. So we're going to send a little impulse signal, voltage signal, and of course the associated current, launching it from this end. We call the ends of these structures, we call them ports. And so we're going to launch a signal from this port over here, port one. It's going to go through the signal line and it's coming out over here to port two. And we're plotting the um, current distribution in the uh, top plane and we're plotting the electric field distribution in the cavity between the two planes. So we call the uh, two planes on adjacent layers, we call that a cavity. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the signal's launched initially from the um, beginning of the, uh, the port, um, and when it starts over, we'll see, we get that initial signal and return current in the top plane, mm -hmm. it travels down, um, and then it encounters this three-dimensional discontinuity in the return path. Mm -hmm. The signal is continuous, but the return path isn't. So here's here's going to start. Mm -hmm. So here's that the return current. It comes over here. And how does it get from, you can't see it on the bottom layer, but there's a comparable return current on the bottom conductor. How does that return current get from the top uh, plane to the bottom plane? And it's in, so as it's propagating, it's in the conduction current in the signal and in the return. And how does it make that complete loop between the signal and return and signal and return? It flows through the electric field between the signal and the return conductor. And we call that current flowing through that change in electric field, we call that displacement current. Um, and so it's flowing through displacement current. And when that conduction current in the signal goes between the signal and the uh, the signal via to the bottom, and you can see the beginning of the bottom conductor leaking out here. When it goes through the the signal, it's all conduction current in the signal path, but it makes the transition from the from the current, the conduction current in the in the top plane to the conduction current in the bottom plane through the changing electric field in that cavity, and that's the dis that's called the displacement current. Just as real as conduction current is just a different kind of current. And you can see that when that current makes its way between the top conductor and the bottom, or the top plane and the bottom plane, look at how much it spreads out. It distributes through the impedance of the cavity. It propagates to the cavity and spreads out. Now, in this particular uh, example, uh, we have made the edges open so that we have reflections back and forth and you can see the resonances in the cavity. So when it spreads out, it hits the end, bounces back and forth, and, and we get the energy trapped in that cavity. It still goes through. We get significant signal going through, but we also get energy left behind trapped in the cavity. And that's where we get noise between, I think, did I show you that example in one of the last videos where it's one of the ex example boards that I do in my PCB class where we have an array of signal vias that transition in a, exactly this structure, four layer board. And we look at one of the, we look at the noise on a victim line when all those 12 signals transition and and we don't have a return yes, via. Yeah, and we get, we see the noise trapped in the cavity. This is a visualization of how that noise gets trapped into the cavity and any other signal via that would be anywhere else would would see that noise in the cavity uh -huh. and that's how we get via to via crosstalk i have yeah. a question so when you yeah. set up this simulation you have the port where the track is where the track starts but you still yes. need also some kind of second port uh, to say where the ground is or well so um, ground is a funny term. We have to be careful how we use that term. When we launch a signal into the front end, we are launching a signal and return. 
So we don't necessarily have to refer to this conductor as ground. It's signal and return. And likewise, for the second conductor, we don't have to have a through path. That is, we could have an open here, but I chose to make it a through path so that the signal would pass all the way through and then come out. And so this is, again, a signal and return connection. And I made them both roughly 50 ohms. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of matched impedances so that signal comes in, goes all the way through, comes out again. And what's left behind is the energy trapped in the cavity. And it's bouncing back and forth because of the opens between the top conductor plane and the bottom conductor plane on layer two and layer three. And it gets trapped in there. And any other signal that passes through those that cavity, even if there's no connection, but just passing through that cavity, it's going to see that induced noise and we're going to get crosstalk. And that was the board that I demonstrated in one of the last videos with you that showed the actual measurement of that crosstalk noise that we would get. The solution to this problem, so this says, oh my gosh, be careful when you have a four-layer board and you transition between a top and bottom layer. Be careful. You're going to leave behind noise in your wake in that cavity between the two planes. You want to reduce the impedance of the cavity as much as you can to reduce the voltage generated in the crosstalk. And one of the simplest ways of doing that is adding return vias. And so I have another, the same example, but now we've added four return vias. Now, in this problem, I had to make it really small. I mean, it's not a whole board. It's a very small piece of this because we just, in the student version, we just don't have a lot of, of mesh elements, a lot of geometry that we can solve. Um, and so if I made it really big, I, it wouldn't solve in this tool. Mm -hmm. But this this version, th this smallness of a problem was able to, to solve. So here is... But, but I still have a question because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, people still may even... <laughs> I have a problem, like, imagine these, like, because you say there is really no ground. There is only this uh, return path. So Tell me what ground is. What is ground? So how how this would look in, like, circuit, how to transform this yeah, sure. to a real yes. circuit. Right. So, for example, so, so ground, there are three kinds of ground. There's earth ground, s chassis ground, circuit ground. So this could be a circuit ground plane in your board. This bottom plane could be a ground plane that is circuit ground. It could also be power uh, power distribution, in which case I don't have a DC connection between the two planes. I have impedance between them, and regardless of the DC voltages, I always have impedance between the two planes because of the fact they're pieces of metal and I have capacitance at low frequency and I have the transmission line cavity resonance coupling at high frequency. And that's how we get the current flow through the impedance of the two planes. Uh, this was important. This was very important. So basically, uh, these two planes, they are not connected directly, but they are connected Correct. through impedance. And Right, the... through their impedance between them. Okay, I right. understand now. And, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, I mean, you cannot... Uh, a part, part of what we engineer in designing the cavity is the impedance between them. And if we want to reduce the voltage I mean, the return current is the return current. If I have a 50 ohm line and I'm launching a one volt signal, that's 20 milliamps of signal return that's launched in that line, right? That 20 milliamps goes through the signal to the bottom layer, and that 20 milliamps of return current goes through the cavity. So it spreads voltage, all around sorry, and 20 it, milliamps just... It, and we see it propagating out. We see that 20 milliamps of return current flowing out in the the EDT of the displacement current throughout the cavity, and it's propagating. And and when that 20 milliamps of current passes between the, uh, the plane on layer two and the plane on layer three, when you have a current through an impedance, you get a voltage. And so if you want to reduce that, that's the voltage that induces crosstalk on everybody else that's going through there. If you want to reduce that voltage, well, yeah, yeah you're you, you're stuck with 20 milliamps of current. That's what the signal is. That's what the return current is. To reduce the voltage, you want to reduce the impedance. And the and best way reduce to reduce the... impedance is to make short circuit between these two planes. One of the important ways is to use shorting vias between the two planes. Mm -hmm. But wait a minute. If I'm going to do that, 
if the two planes aren't at the same DC voltage, the technical term for that situation, I tell my students, is you're screwed because you got two different voltages. You're shorting them out. You're going to blow something up. And so you have to have the same voltage between the planes mm -hmm. in order to add the shorting via. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think one of the important design guidelines, best practices, if you're designing a four-layer board and you don't need to carry you know, 30, 40, 50 amps of current, if it's a four-layer board, using a configuration of signal, ground, ground, signal is a very effective stack up mm -hmm. because that gives you the opportunity of adding return vias mm -hmm. when the signals transition. Mm -hmm. So you want to see what it looks like, what that field looks like when I add return vias? Yeah, definitely. Okay, Do you have so also different the, uh, places? Because I believe it's it depends on the place where you put the vias. Well, to, to uh, first order, Having one return via is the most important thing. Exactly where you place it, you want to place it in proximity is important, but to first order, doesn't really matter. Second order, and especially at very high, fre high frequency, meaning in the many gigahertz, the 10, 20 gigahertz range, it's important. But for the gigahertz and typical kind of, you know, if this are single-ended signals, you're going to use them in the giga gigabit per second and below. doesn't really matter exactly where you add the return via. But look at the impact. Exactly the same simulation. We're sending the signal between the signal and the return. It's, it's launching down just like it was before. We'll get it started again here. We'll see it launching uh, from the, the port. It's the same stack up, same, you know, 50 ohm line. Uh, we launch it at the beginning. Here it goes. Signal return. It spreads out in that cavity. But look, as soon as it gets the the shorting vias, we, we get that that really low impedance. There's very little propagation of the field outside of it. Very little field. We see a little, you know, on this scale. We're looking at the very low end here. Same scale as we had before. Very very little field. Just you know where we have the reflections at the ends. So it dramatically cuts down the voltage induced in the cavity, and that means a lot less. Um, uh, via to via crosstalk, and um, and so how many return vias do you need? Well, at a minimum you want one, and you want it in close proximity. And so I always say, as a general best design practice, when you've got your four layer board and you're routing signals and you drop a signal via, add a return via in proximity. What does that mean? As close as practical. The closer is better, but. It's better to have one farther away than none. Mm -hmm. And the more you put on the board, you know, the lower the the cavity noise. But having um, and and unfortunately, it's a really hard thing to estimate. Uh, it's using these kinds of tools is one of the ways to um, to engineer it and to and to discover the noise. You can't do very large board in the free student version, but. You know, and this is part of the teaser of, of why you do this is, wow, this is really cool. I want to know what it's going to be like in my whole board and where I place vias and do I have enough vias? And so that's where you have to buy the real version. And then there's a version that ANSYS has called SI Wave that literally lets you take the ODB++ files of your entire board, bring it into SI Wave, add ports like this on the ends, simulate signals, and with the precise distribution of return vias that you have, look at the signal-signal crosstalk. But that requires a m more complex um, uh, software tool with, uh, you know, a, you know, more expensive and you, you need more compute power to do it. Okay, I have a question, I have a question. Yeah. When the signal travels, then I can see this uh, return current also on the bottom plane. Is it because it's a kind of semi-transparent or uh, is it going to be always also on the second side of the plane or it depends on the frequency because of the skin depth or? Right. So, yeah, you're right. So if you look at the top signal here, we're looking at the, the current. You can see it here. Yeah. Here's the current between the signal and return on the top surface of that plane. Um, and so uh, you mentioned the skin depth. So that's the right term to think about. And just as a number to keep in mind, um, at one gigahertz, this is my rule of thumb, what I remember. Uh, and I, I'm going to do a plug. I'm actually doing a webinar uh, with a Signal Integrity Journal that I'm technical editor of. I'm doing the webinar on um, May uh, May 18th on um, 10 rules of thumb that I use all the time. And, and one of those rules of thumb is uh, that at one gigahertz, the skin depth for copper is two microns. 
and it scales with the square root of frequency. So if I go down a factor of 100 in frequency to 10 megahertz, then I go up by square root of 100, which is 10, go up by 10, so that's 20 microns. So at 10 megahertz, the skin depth of copper is 20 microns. Mm -hmm. And you know, typical plane, if it's one ounce copper, that's 34 microns. So that says that, you know, the current at 10 megahertz and above, the current on the top surface doesn't go to the bottom side of the board. It's within the, the top 20 microns of the board. And so at 10 megahertz and above, all the return current is on the top surface here and on the bottom, microstrip all the return currents on the bottom 20 microns at 10 megahertz and above and so we don't see it uh, on the inside of the plane we don't see it on the you know we're not looking on the bottom of the plane but we can't see it on the inside of that plane mm -hmm. it's not there um so and i have nine other uh rules of thumb that i'm going to be presenting at that webinar so it'll be a um a, it'll be a very fun webinar it's all completely free and um, as soon as it gets announced, I think later this week it's going to be announced by um, Signal Integrity Journal, and um, yeah, you know, and I'll send you the link, and you can let your your viewers know about it. It'll be a, a lot of fun webinar. Okay. Um, but that, so that's where the we see the return current on the top surface, and we see the electric field on the inside of the of the cavity, and so the return via dramatically reduces the noise that gets into the cavity. And this is the kind of problem that requires a full wave field solver because it is inherently a 3D structure. Um, and I have, I have one other example to show. 